evaluations and I'm quite happy for you to interrupt or post a question and I'll try and answer. So um, next slide, please, my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, we uh, use the survey tool quite a bit at Oxford, and um, we don't use it like anybody else does, I don't think. So we don't we don't use the hierarchy. Most people use uh, this big hierarchy where you can do top-down institutional-wide um, surveys, where <clears throat> sort of individual departments can add a few questions, but not many. That sort of thing. We use it for course evaluation, but also for uh, just general surveys as well. So um, whenever I say survey, it, it's the same thing as evaluation. And whenever I say WebLearn, it's the same thing as Sakai. So apologies for that. So you can do um, an anonymous online survey. So in other words, it never records who says what. I don't even think the database has got a record of who says what. Um, and uh, I've cer we certainly can't find out who said what. So it is very anonymous, which hopefully gives people confidence. So you can deliver um, the survey to Sakai users or people who don't have a user account. So I put the general public, um, although it, you can actually um, email um, a, a list of people um, with a link to the survey, but they don't necessarily have to app, have to log in. So basically, you've got two things: you either log in or you don't, uh, which is quite flexible. And as well as being able to administer the survey, as you would imagine, you can look at the survey results as well. Um, and there's a sort of a, a fairly nice PDF report. Mm -hmm. So so we use it, as I said, for course evaluation or feedback or just general sort of data collection, really. Um, it doesn't have to be based around a course. You can just ask, you know, what sort of food people like or something like that if you want to. Um, next slide, please. Um, okay, so what it can do, it, well, we've said that, it can have a private or public um, uh, questionnaires. Um, but you can have a few different sort of elements on the survey. I've got a couple of screenshots of a couple of these later on. But as you might imagine, you can have Likert scales um, and, uh, and rating scales. So there are predefined um, scales um, and you can add new ones yourself. Um, I should say this, the tool is very, very configurable. So it's possible that your institution has got some, some things turned off that I'm talking about, if, if you do have it. Um, but we've got most things turned on, but not everything. So anyway, you can have like art scales. That's, you know, uh, whether you agree with a, a, a statement or that sort of thing. Um, you can have multiple choice questions. Um, you can have multiple response questions, which are just like multiple choice questions, but you can tick more than one answer. You can have text boxes. Um, although we don't have those as being compulsory. Um, you can set fields as being compulsory. Um, I think you can do it with the latest version of text boxes, with uh, sorry, evaluations, but we don't have that. We're a, a version behind. And then you can break your page up with headings, free text, HTML text, all that sort of thing. Um, the system can handle sending reminders on your behalf, um, or you can do it yourself if you want. Um, you set open and close dates. And there is an extension date as well that you can set. Um, you get a PDF summary report, and you can export all the data to uh, Excel if you want. So okay, next slide. Thank you. Um, so there's three three stages in creating a server. You create a template. Uh, then uh, once the, the template is the thing that you sort of stamp out a survey from. So the template contains all the questions. And then when you want to do a survey, you just um, add sort of an instance of the template, add some dates to it, um, say who you want it to go to, and then uh, save it, and off it goes. And then, you, of course, you can use the template again and do another survey, exactly the same questions to another bunch of people, and so on and so forth. Um, the last stage of the assignment is to assign it, uh, the um, setting up the survey is to assign it to either like a group of people, a Sakai site, or just say it's totally public. Um, you don't have to log in. So next slide. Um, so this is an example of the Likert scale type questions. Um, I think we added some four-point scales to this list. It's not too difficult to do. Um, so you can either give, you know, if you're the administrator, you can, can lock down the scales, or you can let um, users add their own scales as well, and they just see their own scales. They're not. You can't sort of share your scales. But if you, as an administrator, uh, set up the scales, then of course everyone in the institution sees them. So uh, next slide. Um, 
so this is just uh, kind of what it looks like to the student really um so i've just got here just got two text boxes added to the page so as well as those those like art scales that you remember you can have multiple choice text boxes and so on and so forth uh, next slide um so this is what the sort of view you see when you're editing a template so what you do is when you start you have no questions and then you add questions one by one and these are uh, you know uh, what five questions there um you can reorder them by dragging and dropping. Um, you can preview them, which is the magnifying glass. Um, you can edit them, which is the pencil, and you can delete them, which is the big X. And I think these questions, when you um, add them to a survey, they look like the screenshot underneath. So they've been grouped. Um, you can group or ungroup questions. If you group them, then you get the heading sort of in the top of the column. If you don't group them, then um, they just look like kind of normal survey questions. So you can save a bit of space by grouping questions which have the same responses, if you see what I mean. Uh, next slide. Adam, can I ask you a quick question? Um, of course you can. Where you have the, the Likert scale, um, is that actually how it looks on the screen with the arrows pointing to each? If you group the questions, yeah. So we've got five questions here which all have the same, they all use the same Likert scale. And uh -huh. we've opted to group them. Um, you don't have to group okay. them. Um, but you can, and it just saves space. Okay. It will appear to the person taking. Uh, that's how it appears to the person taking it, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, thanks. Okay, uh, so next slide. So this is more for reference purposes, really. Um, if anyone, because we've done a lot of work with the survey tool, and we think we understand it. Um, so when you set up a new survey, so you've got your template, when you set up the survey, you can add the dates. So that's the start date, the closing date, and the extension date can't quite remember how the extension date works to be honest but it but it does um, then you can say what you who you want the survey results to be seen by so you can make them public you can make them private or the option that we've got here is configurable which means that if you assign a survey to a Sakai site then you can say that the sort of lecturers as it were uh, are able to see the survey results or you can say that they can't um, so that's how it's configured um, something I didn't mention is that you can uh, assign, actually I'll, I'll say it in a minute, um, and then the next box is to choose whether you want people to log in or not, um, and um, yeah, well that's fairly obvious, yeah, so it, it, quite often if you're surveying people who don't normally use Sakai, we would recommend that you don't get them to log in, uh, that we feel that people have got better things to do with their time than fill in surveys for a laugh when they stumble across the URL, so we do often recommend that people don't log in but that does mean that you can't track um, who has responded and who hasn't um, you can say whether people are allowed to go back and change their answers generally we set them so they can um, and then you can set up the notifications uh, as to whether you, the people get an initial notification uh, to say the survey is available and then you can set a reminder and that sort of thing and you can also set who the survey is has come from so it's quite configurable and you can do quite a lot on that screen anyway moving on because uh, i've been talking a long time so Adam, oh yes there's, quite, there's a bit of a conversation in the chat and i want oh, sorry to, uh, yeah. that's okay uh, i just wanted to take an opportunity to capture some of that in the recording right. that we're doing okay and so um one of the questions was uh about um, whether this tool is available in Sakai now. Is it a core tool? It's not a core tool, no, it's a contrib tool. Um, okay. uh, up, un up until um, I think when um, Mona, what's her name, left Longsight. Was that her name? Can't remember her name. Anyway, uh, she left about a year ago. She seemed to be in charge of it. Um, I'm not oh, entirely yeah. sure who the lead is now. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it's still a tool. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work with Morpheus because there are quite a few tables. Um, but I guess we'll see. But yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it's a, it's not a core tool, but it's a contrib tool, and it's correct. It's not part of a site particularly. Um, I mean, you have to get to it from a site, um, and you, you can. Uh, you, well, it has to be on a site to get to it. So it could be in everybody's my workspace if you wanted it to be, okay. Oh, okay. Um, or we uh, we just allow people to add it to a site as a as a tool. Um, because the way to get into it is you have to be a, a kind of maintainer, you know, a teacher on a site. Uh, you have to click on the link and then it knows you're in a site, and then then you're allowed to administer surveys. If you're not 
um, like a, a maintainer or a teacher, then it assumes you're a student and you sort of get the, uh, the, um, the dashboard where you, it, you are told about the surveys you've got to answer. So, um, okay. Should we move yeah. on? Uh, we should, yes. So I was just trying to scan the um, questions. Right, okay. So this is, again, more for reference purposes because people seem to get very confused about what happens if you say log in or don't have to log in and then who you uh, assign it to and so forth. So I was going to talk about the assigning, uh, I think, on the next slide, which we should go to. Um, now, um, oh, what have I done here? Uh, right, okay. Um, yes, so once you've set up the dates and whether you want people to log in, then it, you, you come to assigning the survey. Now you can assign it to uh, nobody um, if it's completely public. Um, so it's you just basically you're doing a survey and then perhaps you put a link on a website and say please fill this in or maybe you send an email you know to the Sakai dev list saying please you know let us know your opinions. Um, so you, you can do that or you can assign it to a site and if you assign it to a Sakai, well actually one or more sites, if you assign it to a site then you can have set the survey up so that it asks the same question about each of the teachers in the site. So the, without going into it too much, there's some permissions associated with evaluations. And if you have that be evaluated permission, which uh, maintainers, teachers do, then, and if you set up a so-called lecturer question, then the same question is asked for each person. So it gives the name and says, what do you think of their teaching? And then you get a chance to respond. So that's quite powerful. Um, um, and that only works if you assign it to a site or more than one site. You can also assign it to a list of email addresses. Um, and you have to be careful that these people have uh, logins to the system. Although I don't think now it lets you assign, uh, say, I don't think it lets you say these people have to log in and then let you put a load of people who don't have accounts who can't log in because that's what we came across once. And the advantage of, of um, of listing people is that um, if you're logging in, um, then you the system can see who's responded and who hasn't. So I haven't, I haven't got a screenshot of that screen, but it, you can get to a page where it says this person's responded, this one hasn't. And to make it anonymous, there's a limit. Um, uh, there's a number of people that have to respond before you can see who's responded, just so you can't tell who said what. Uh, next slide. Um, so this is the survey administrators page. Uh, so this is where you've got current surveys and surveys that are finished and you can look at the results. You can see who's responded. You can see the percentage. You can check which groups. You can actually reassign the survey. If you want to make a spelling mistake or something, you can, you can go and change the uh, question and then reassign it. Um, ne next slide. Uh, so quick question here, oh, Adam. Yes, so sorry. all of the results are stored in Sakai table. The, yes, that they that? are somewhere, yeah, yeah. And it was Nicola Monat Jacobs, yeah, who was who was in charge, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well. yeah. Um, so on that previous page, you can get to the results. Um, I, I don't really know why it says usually private. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true. It depends what you've set it to. Um, but you can make them available to people who have taken the survey. So if you've responded, then you can see the, the responses. Um, or you can just keep it to... And the survey owner, or you can share it between the <clears throat> people who are being evaluated on the site. Um, you get a PDF summary and you get an Excel download. And obviously, you can kind of email these two documents around if you want to share it more widely. The sharing of results isn't ideal, actually. And we have uh, got a patch that we haven't contributed back yet uh, to let you pass the results on to somebody else so you can change the owner of the results. Um, but what we'd really like to do is let you configure a list of names who can see the results. Um, but we, maybe we'll do that one day. A uh, bit busy, I'm afraid. Uh, only two more slides. Um, okay, um, another question about oh, the results. Oh, sorry, yes. Um, the, um, when you're sharing, does, do the yep. people yep. you're sharing with need to be added to your site? They have to be in the site, yes. Okay. They, okay. Basically, when you assign the survey, it takes a snapshot of the site. Um, so it's no good adding them later. So um, oh. so basically, it's the people who are being evaluated generally are the people who can be allowed to see the results. Um, or okay. you can let everybody see it, everyone who's taken it or has been evaluated see it. Right, okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Okay. And the next slide is just an example of the PDF download. So it sort of does a bit of graphical stuff on the results. 
it's it's pretty good. It's not it's not totally flawless, but it's pretty good. You get a general idea, and then of course the uh, Excel spreadsheet. Um, if you knew what you were doing, you could recreate this with pie charts and stuff. But also, you can do some quite serious analysis with the with the spreadsheet by doing pivot tables and you know, all sorts of all sorts of stuff. So you can actually get nice nice results out of it. Uh, I mean, the um, it's not as good as uh, some systems. Some systems have got a huge amount of sort of results viewing code in there um and our evaluation tool's got a bit um but you can use excel so that's fine and then the last slide which i think it's just some some links that you might um okay, find well useful done. um we believe we have the world's best survey guide um we sort of looked at all the other survey guides um uh, appropriated material from it and then added loads of bits that were missing but as i said it's surveys very configurable so there might be bits in our guide you don't have and vice versa, and we also did a, a comparison between um, the WebLearn, uh, sorry, the Sakai survey tool, and a few other tools as well, like SurveyMonkey and so on. Uh, so that's that survey comparison. I have no idea whether there's a Twitter logo on that page. <laughs> there shouldn't be. And that, that was it anyway. Let me just see if there's any questions I can answer. Um, yeah, there were a couple in here. Um, yeah, yeah. One question by Terry is: uh, Is there any development to make the tool more manageable when the list of templates and evals get larger? Apparently, there's um, <laughs> no organization problems. We have terrible problems with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, we say we're running a really old version. Uh, we did a bit of paging, and I can't remember whether that got contributed back. But even then, it's um, somebody was. What did somebody brought the, the whole of our system to the to its knees by by um, having several tabs open and trying to list all their surveys in each tab, and it basically slowed the system down. So that's not oh. good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's only happened once. So we <laughs> we will try and do something about that, but. As I said, we're not going to do it in the short term, I'm afraid. So, so you guys are doing some work on this because you're you're using it a lot. I'm curious to know if anybody else is um, actively using it and um, uh, doing yeah, development. Look, I don't know about the development. I mean, you, normally there's an evaluations boff at the uh, conference, but there wasn't this year. Um, in the past, yeah, there's, um, I'd say, about 15 institutions around the table, and presumably there's more that don't get to the conference. But uh, but everybody, I think without exception, apart from us, are using the hierarchy feature. And a lot of people don't actually use the user interface. They have database SQL wizardry, which does everything bypassing the sort of the user interface, but still uses the evaluations tool, but sets up all the groups and all that sort of thing behind the scenes, and then does a huge top-down it's mass emailing of everybody in the university um, doing their sort of end of end of semester um, survey. So I don't think anyone is actually using it as a survey tool, and it amazes me because it, it's pretty good, really, as a survey tool. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I mean, well, I'm happy to kind of uh, give people pointers, uh, you know, sort of offline, as it were, um, help you out getting going if you did want to experiment with it as a, as a survey tool. Interesting. And I'm just looking at the chats about how others are using it and have used it, um, and it looks like it's it's being pretty successful where it's being used mm. right now. Yeah, we get lots of good comments about it, and we get lots of requests for enhancement, which we can't always address because we're just too busy. Is there some integration with the course management module in Sakai? For that data? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> now, somebody might know, but <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we don't use the we we don't use that module either, and, and we don't do kind of top down evaluation. So. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, sorry. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for Adam that you'd like to come on the mic or chat? Let's see. Look, looks like um, Laura Geckler asks, which sites appear in the selection list? Only published sites. Yes. I think that's true, yes. Yes, and only sites with enough students on it to um, that you can assign a survey to it. You can't assign a survey to a site with one student on it because then you'd know what they said. Uh, actually, the sites appear, but the tick box is grayed out, so you can't, you can't oh, select okay. the site. Well, that's good. Mm. That's uh, post the two links in the chat. Sure, good, good thought. Um, yeah, let, I can do that. Hang on, I can, can do that do now. That? Okay. Yeah, I have PowerPoint open. Yeah. 
Hi, this is Laura. Hi. The um, one thing I was thinking about the use of this system and the use of Sakai is that, uh, at least at our institution, the um, the departments that choose those products are two separate products. And so it becomes complicated when they're bundled together. If you were trying to um, adopt the eval sys and, um, and then the, let's say the department that chooses your LMS moved away from Sakai, um, that would create more disruption than it would have to. Has anybody thought of an LTI tool? Yeah, I'm not aware of any. I you feel there probably is one, but no, I don't know. Laura, that's an interesting um, issue that could arise and would present a bit of a conundrum, I would think, but um, interesting mm. question. Mm. Well, it's a... Uh, well, mm, go ahead. Yeah, I'm Terry. I see that comment there. I'm, uh, I was just going to say, I'm a... I'm a advocate of making uh, making our learning management system and and the tools that we connect into it more modular so that you can make choices uh, you know by different departments and separately from each other yeah definitely and I think this would um, this would have a lot of potential as an LTI tool um, in wider circles. Mm, um, mm. Yeah, yeah. LTI is, is definitely a good way to go. Um, so, uh, any other questions or thoughts before we move on to Laura Geckler's discussion of Piazza? And thank you very much, Adam. For My pleasure. Presentation. It's very interesting and uh, good food for thought for those of us who are um, casting about for an evaluation solution. Well, I'll just stick my email address in, and then if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to email me. I will respond. There you go. Thank you. Okay, so I am going to uh, try to figure out how to. Um, yeah. I guess if I hand off, Laura, are you, do you want to do some presentation? Shall I give you presenter? That sounds good. Okay. You are now in presenter mode, as far as I know. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens. And if what? you have slides to upload, there should you should see a plus icon kind of below the whiteboard area that you can use to upload your slides? Well, the first thing I discover is that I'm going to have to go away and come back because I'm using Chrome and my Chrome tells me it no longer supports Java applets and that I will have to use Firefox. So let me pop off and come back that way. Okay. Okay, hold please. And so, so uh, while we're waiting for Laura to reappear, um, I'm just looking at the chat conversation, Neil. Um, your conversation, you had invited Dr. Chuck to come and talk to us about LTI, but um, you were never able to pin him down on a date. You think um, you might ping him again and, and offer some of our open dates? Sorry. I Okay, Sorry, I'm back. Had, uh, um, was that addressed to me about Dr. Chuck? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I mean, part of it was there specific just talk about LTI or talk about SUGI or um, mm -hmm. whatever. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll ping him again and I'll, I'll give him some dates. Uh, um, so sure. I'll give it a shot. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>
So, Laura, you should have the privileges you need. Are you in progress there? I am. Um, I'm attempting to share my screen now. Okay. Looks like it's successful. All right. So, do you see the Piazza website? Mm hmm Piazza, and I love the way you said it, Trish. It's a uh, piazza. It's a it's a public forum or plaza where students can ask questions. Um, and Piazza is a third-party tool developed by a student who was shy and didn't want to ask questions in class. So here at Notre Dame. And I believe I am already logged into our Sakai instance. And I am showing you an unpublished site where Piazza is over here on the left-hand toolbar. It's uh, plugged in as an LTI tool, which they provide support for. So they built the LTI tool. And when you contact them and say, hey, listen, we'd, we'd like to plug Piazza into our, our LMS, they will give you the remote tool URL, the key, and the secret. And um, we started a couple years ago. We were getting faculty requests um, for the use of Piazza, and our administrators didn't know what it was. And some people just went off, and they were using Sakai, and they were also using Piazza. And um, so we wanted to help them connect their experience, because we really do believe that since we've got about 50% um, adoption rate here among faculty that affects 80% of our students, that for a unified student experience, we sort of want to make our LMS the hub. So um, at first blush, when we, when we got the first two or three requests, we would take faculty one by one to site info display, and we would take them to edit tools. And this is Sakai 10 now, but back in the day when this started, um, we would have them go to basic LTI and show them how to configure it. And then we would put um, the configuration on our documentation site. And um, the problem with that was that they would also uh, find, and I'm going back to uh, Piazza here, but they would also find instructions for managing their course sites on Piazza. Um, the completely free Q&A platform that does have support for LMS, but the instructions on the Piazza website um, are, are based on the premise that you are accessing it separately from an LMS and not uh, that you've already integrated it. So our instructors were getting a little confused with how to manage the whole enrollment thing. And sometimes they still are. But what's interesting about this instructor that I'm showing you is that Piazza allows you to create a site for your question and answers. So it's basically a forum, right? Create a site um, for each of your sections or for your course itself for a specific term or, uh, and this is appealing to a lot of people, for, um, for multiple semesters. So you simply keep adding uh, students to the same place. And uh, they've done a very good job of, of the experience when you first turn the tool on, you first click here, it knows that you're an instructor, and it asks you if you've already got a Piazza course set up or whether you would like to um, if you also, if you already have a course set up inside of Piazza that you'd like to map to, in other words, this Sakai context to a course on Piazza, or whether you're coming to Piazza for for a completely different course and you'd like to create that course um, now, so you can see that this instructor I'm impersonating is um, used Piazza quite a bit. Holly has. Uh, for this spring semester, a total of 885 posts. She tells her students, um, and they're, 
well, those are posts, and then there's contributions of over 2,000. And instructor responses, now that's not all her. She has a series of TAs who help identify the best answer to every question. And she tells students right on her site information display, her homepage, and this is uh, quite a rich homepage. We can get into course design questions later about um, what you should do with this page and why it shouldn't just be text and all that sort of thing. But this is what she does. And she highlights Piazza right up here. That's what we're going to be using. Um, that's where your questions are going. Don't email um, your instructors and um, find, your, find your information there. And since I'm displaying my screen, I haven't been seeing if there are any questions. So we're, we were having a conversation on the chat here. Um, I was pointing out that at UVA, we have created a pre-configured LTI tool for Piazza that appears in the edit tools list. So anyone can select it um, already configured to add to their site. We went ahead um, and did that after the first five or six of those requests. We um, and, and I think that's good practice, right, for any of these uh, tools that you're not sure about. If you read, if you read the Piazza um, at the bottom here, they keep updating their terms of service. This whole legal thing um, uh, gets you, they'll tell you they're FERPA compliant, they'll tell you they're not going to use any of your material, um, so anyway, we wanted to check these out, and our legal department has checked out Piazza, and I think that's going to be a regular practice before we do um, precisely what UVA did, so that now you can go yeah. to the and tools. Right. We did the very same thing, Laura. We, um, we went through um, our procurement um, who handled the legal and security issues, and, and so we have a contract with Piazza, but it is a free um, license, but the, our contract language with them, you know, ensured that um, their policies don't violate ours. That's very so interesting. I think that's yeah. I will have to get back to legal to find out if we took that step. I know we reviewed their legal information, but I don't think we actually have any sort of SL, SLA with them. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, if you're interested, I can uh, try to locate that contract. Yeah. And uh, point you yeah, in the direction. Yeah. Uh, there's also a question, does Piazza have an ability to provide notifications? Do you know the answer to that? Um, yes, it does. Uh, and I'm not sure how configurable they are. Um, we were talking to a student this morning who said he finds the notifications annoying. Um, I, I so remember recall getting them quite frequently, and I don't know how frequently, if you're really actively using it, how, how well, how much you're able to configure that yeah. as an individual. There, there are some questions in, in the chat about, um, the about the differences, and this is the big one. The big difference is that this is entirely anonymous. So I think I had um, the home. A oh, difference and, between, between this tool and forums, you mean? Yes. Um, okay. So if we were to differentiate these from pre-existing, and I was looking for that page, and I'm not finding it, so I'll just flip back here. But to differentiate it from any of the other tools in Sakai, the big difference is that these answers and questions are always anonymous. They are completely anonymous. And, and Dave, this is, these are the kinds of questions um, I think Holly decided to do some kind of participation grade um, to, your, to your question about does it affect grading. She wanted 
to get all of our students in Piazza, but how do you do that if they're, um, if they're all anonymous? So that is a challenge. It's not a grading kind of thing. <laughs> it's, it's more of an engagement in the classroom and engaging people who might not have a voice otherwise, who might not speak up. Um, to Jerry Timbrook's question, whether how Piazza stays afloat if they don't charge, I honestly don't know. Their um, their website says that they uh, that they charge companies well selling our anonymous data. No, it's uh, it looks like they've just added this um, Piazza careers, and that now those of us that don't have the kinds of contracts that UVA has, which hopefully would prevent this, um, we'll be getting some advertisements. So I saw that here on their website that it's called Piazza Careers. They want to uh, recruit. And I saw this also as the instructor that it's one of the first pages presenting. Dear pro professors, we launched a new service called Piazza Careers. And through this service, we have connected students with other students studying similar subjects with recent alumni now in industry and with potential employers. So um, you need to read that um, more carefully and determine whether we need to reevaluate our use of Piazza. Um, but that's okay, there, we have, um, so Tony is curious, is, it, is the purpose for students to post questions that they have about content or to respond to questions formulated by the instructor? Both. But, yeah. Both. Now you can, you can choose to post a private question in which your name, your, you can choose to reveal your name. Um, I hesitate to go into the data here to show you how it uh, works because it is real live data. Um, but we can show you some stats that you can deliver on the class. Uh, so this so, is uh, Spring 15 Chemistry. Um, and this does look like this is how the um, contribution, the participation grade is given by Holly. It looks like uh, you do have student names against how many questions they've asked. So you could say, you know, you need to ask so many questions, answer so many questions. Right. And we you have, another have question. yeah. We have another question. Could this tool be added to the My Workspace of all users so that users could suggest and upvote the Kai improvements and features? My guess is that that would not work because my it's an LTI and, and in My Workspace, I could see the survey tool that we just saw that Adam just demoed being used for that purpose, possibly. But I'm not sure that, that Piazza is going to function well for my workspace, since it's private to you. Right. But I basically... Um, sorry. Uh, I, I just wanted to make the note that um, I think that as we, as we talk more about where learning management systems are going, that we will see them increasingly modularized increasingly able to take advantage of free tools, third-party tools, and, and open source tools by other Aperio projects. So we kind of need to think in terms of um, modular, oh great, I got another meeting coming up, <laughs> uh, a modular approach. Um, and one of the things we haven't thought about really well is getting the data back to some kind of central repository. Well, if my calendar would ever go away, I could get you something else. Where are we? Here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. So this so is Laura, just a dash. Let me just, let me just do a time check, Laura. Hold on. Um, 
we've got uh, maybe five minutes left because we need to end early to allow the accessibility meeting to join this room, and maybe some of you are staying for that, and that's great. Um, but Absolutely. we have to um, end a little early today. So we have about five minutes. And um, so if you, if you want to wrap up with um, final thoughts, and then we'll um, go check in on the rest of our agenda. Sounds good. The last thing was to make a note of any LTI tool of how much information we store in Sakai and hopefully to trend to make that better than just the fact that they launched the tool, which is what you see here. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Laura. So um, if you want to stop your desktop share, that would um, would be good because I <laughs> can't seem to get back to there. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so back on Etherpad. Should we exit for the reordering to complete for the next session to begin? Recording to complete. Oh.